So, Beresford, it's such a delight to have you here this morning, and, um, and also your lovely wife, Stacey, to have her here, and uh, Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. You see, I said Stacy because Stacy Campbell, prophetess, prophets, blah, 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 and, uh, but Tracy here, and uh, sign of age. Um, but actually, I want to just say this this morning. Um, there, are some, there are some people in a church that you value very deeply because they support and love you. And this couple have done that for Patricia and me over many, many years. And, you know, it's because of that that I would always honour um, these two for their tremendous blessing and support and love and prayer. On top of which, to have a prophet um, here with us in Beresford is just brilliant. I want us to all stand and let's just give Beresford a welcome. As well as Tracy. Tell her to come up and say something now. Well, good morning. It's great to be here. Um, who's been watching the America's Cup? Anyone? Of course. Of course. Yes, thank you. I was uh, watching it. I keep watching it. I get quite frustrated when New Zealand makes a mistake. Not that any of you do, I know. But it's good sitting behind a TV, though, telling what they should do, isn't it? So uh, it's great racing. And I put a comment up there about who would win as a bit of a laugh. And I've got quite bad feedback, if any of you have seen my little comment. But that's OK. We won't talk about that here. All right. So this is called, this morning, I've called this Aligning Our Thoughts with the Holy Spirit. And um, around October last year, I was driving the car. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you need to align your thinking to my thinking. And I was like, align my thinking. And I thought, I thought I was doing that. And here's one of the analogies I've got. I'm going to use a, 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 a America's Cup sailing analogy. So hopefully you'll understand that. When you see the boats and they're foiling, they are going at speed. They're awesome, aren't they? They go really fast. When they come off the foils, they drop down or they go really slow. And I felt the Lord speak. I was watching the race and he said, when you're thinking the way I'm thinking, you're on the foils. When you go back to your thinking, it's like dropping off them and going. You're moving, but it's a lot slower. And I thought, oh, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Anyway, little analogy there. So, <clears throat> Isaiah 55, 6 to 8. Seek the Lord while he, be found, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon his way and the unrighteous person his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. So, another way of looking at this is... Our natural thinking is actually quite different to the way the Lord's thinking. And when we align ourselves the way the Lord's thinking, it looks really different. It's like looking at it with another lens, another perspective. And what I've learned in life is to step back a little bit and to process and to look again and to not believe everything I see with my eyes or hear. And as you know, at the moment, um, in the nations, there's a lot of stuff going on. You've got COVID and all sorts of things. And my response to all that is, Lord, how do you want me to see what you're doing during this time? So it's stepping back, looking through another lens and saying, how can I be used during a difficult time? So if we don't start aligning with the thoughts of Jesus, we do what everyone else in the world, we, we think logically. Now, I have a very logical mind. Anyone else here have a logical mind? Probably a few of you here. Yes, there are. So my logical mind likes to think one and one is two, and this looks like that, so this looks like that. What I've realized in life is my logical thinking gets in the way of the way the Lord thinks a lot of times. Because what I do is I put things in boxes, say that's how that works, and then the Lord will come along and say, yeah, yeah, no, you've boxed that in the way you want it to be. How about you see it through my lens, which takes off the parameters that you've put around it. And so as I've journeyed with God, I know it's a, an exciting time because there's always opportunity for the Lord to use all of us. So let me, let me give you a few points here about thinking. If, if everything you view is defeated before going into battle, you're not aligning to Jesus. Have you ever had that where you're already, the battle's lost before you've started? In other words, I could never do that. I don't think I'm good enough, so I'll never even start. So you defeat yourself before you even go into the battle. And that's not what we're designed for, is it? You see, we're designed actually for battle. 
You know we're warriors, we're high priests, we're people who carry the presence of God. We're not designed to stand and go, whoa, I can't do that. For all things are possible for those in Christ Jesus. So all things are possible for us. So every time we stand back and go, wow, that battle's too hard for me, so I'll just ignore it and walk away, you've dropped off your foils and you're going slow again. Make sense? Cool. If you think about others as inferior or superior to who you are, you're not aligning yourself to how Jesus thinks. Now, sometimes in life, and look, it's great to have heroes that we look up to, right? It's great to look at people and go, man, I admire that person. I want to be more like them. But when we look at people and go, I'll never be like that. I'm such a failure. You're not aligning. Oh, man, that's hitting some of you here today. Now, listen, listen to me, people. There's no failures in the kingdom. There's no mistakes in the kingdom. Everyone has incredible value. If you look at your life and think, I've failed or I'm not good enough or that person's better than me, you've stopped aligning yourself to who the Holy Spirit says you are. Your sons and daughters, you carry the presence of God. You have the ability to change the planet with what you carry. Think about that. So if you see someone as superior to you, it's, again, it's good to see people have uh, greater abilities than that, but don't put people on platforms and leave them there because you carry something. If you see now the reverse of that, of where you see everyone below you, that they're, below, uh, they're not worthy of my time, it's the same problem, isn't it? Because everyone's worthy of our time. doesn't matter where we are in life. The one thing I've learned in life through business, through church, through everything I've done is everyone's valuable to God. And you know why I do really well in business? Because every person uh, that works for me, I serve them. I serve them because these people, I want to serve them and I want to see them flourish and I want to see them doing well because I believe in them, every person. So every person in this church here today, I believe in every one of you because Jesus does. And you see, you align your thoughts to that, you start believing in each other. It's powerful, isn't it? You know, in the worship today, when the worship was going, it was so awesome because I find when I get into worship, I start praying over things. It's this radical thing. that it's, Anyone else get that stuff? The worship's like God starts downloading. And I love it. I'm sitting there. I start declaring. I start speaking into people's lives. I start believing for God to move in these different realms, and I get excited because I can feel the presence of God moving and shifting. And so it's reminding us and reminding me of who we are. If you believe you're in a small town and nothing good could come for it, say you live in Henderson or Teatertu, and you go, well, I only come out of Teatertu. What good can, can come out of here? Remember Nazareth. They said, Nazareth, can anything good come from this little town? It's in the Bible. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Ah, oh, actually, this guy Jesus did. Right at the time would have been, Wow, which, which is going to come out of this big city or maybe it's going to come out of the US. God can move anywhere, anytime with any one of you because each one of you is precious to God and you all have something to give. So remember that. Can anything good come out of this church? Absolutely. We're, 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 we're nation changers. We're here to change our cities, to transform people's lives, and to pray, because prayer, that goes past any boundary any person can put out, doesn't it? It's very, very powerful. If you don't believe you have what God needs, not enough faith, not enough power, not enough prayer, then you've forgotten who you are. Because, you see, you're called by God. The enemy's tactic is this, to make you to stop believing in who you are. That's the main tactic. If you forget who you are, and you stop believing what you carry, then an enemy's winning. You've come off your foils. You're going slow again. And that's why we need the body, isn't it? That's why we need each other. Because as we stand and we pray and we talk, I had someone talking to me this morning just telling me what they were going through. And we, she was sharing to me, and I, I was just talking some stuff, and I could feel the Holy Spirit speaking to her because I was wanting to encourage her in her journey, and it was encouraging me, encouraging her. It's good, isn't it? It's the way it works. It's reciprocal. It just keeps going. If the prayer you prayed wasn't answered the way you wanted it, the enemy can turn this into control and manipulation. God, if you don't do this, I'm not going to do this. That's not aligning who we are in God. You see, the outcomes are the Lord's responsibility. Sometimes when we pray, the outcomes don't look exactly how we seem they would do. Now, my logical mind loves to, when I pray, think God's going to move this way and put it together that way because it looks very logical to me. The amount of times I've watched God do complete opposites and look completely different, but better outcomes or different outcomes, I've learned to actually I need to trust you in this, Lord, and not get upset with you or disappointed because it didn't look the way 
I wanted it. Okay. I guarantee when your thoughts tell you it's impossible, we need to remember this. All things are possible for those in Christ Jesus. We give the enemy way too much territory. Do you know we do that in life? We give the enemy way too much territory because our mind goes into this realm of it's really bad, I can't achieve this, I can't break through, it's impossible. And it, it just gives the enemy fuel. What we need to do is step back, get people around us sometimes, say, hey, would you just sit and pray with me? And, and just, um, can you, I'm going through this, just share with people sometimes and let them speak back to you. And because let people love on you, but let people speak into you and believe in you. Because we all go through the journey, don't we? There's no one of you here today that hasn't been through a difficult time or maybe in a difficult time at the moment. God is still with you. He hasn't leaving you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's still with you. And that's what I love of the kingdom of God is it's this body, this people group that can hang together and do amazing things together. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I love this verse, right? Because it's about the, the unknown but trusting in God. In the Bible, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength and its faithfulness. Great way of seeing is, isn't it? Promise, strength, and faithfulness. That's a hope that I want to believe in. I want to talk about Moses and the spies in Canaan. Now, I love this story, and I've got a little clip I'd love to play you. Thank you. Sorry. The next section begins as the Israelites arrive in the desert of Paran, about halfway to the promised land. And God tells Moses to send out the 12 spies, one for each tribe, so they can scout out the promised land. So when the spies all return, 10 of them say that there is no chance Israel can survive there because the Canaanites will destroy them. But there are two spies, Caleb and Joshua, who say that God can save them. But the 10 whip up the people into a fearful rage and they start planning a mutiny. They're going to appoint a new leader and head back to Egypt. So God is understandably angry and Moses intercedes on the people's behalf. He calls God to be faithful to his promises to Abraham. And so God does, but not at the expense of his justice. He gives these Israelites what they want to not enter the land. And God sentences this generation to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until they die. Only their children will get to enter the promised land. All right, so that's a quick overview of... um with the spies, the 12 spies, a lot of you heard that story, <clears throat> and I love that story. The reason why I love that story is I, I always think, how would I have processed if these 12 people came in front of me and two of them would say, this land's ours, and 10 of them said it's not, we can't overcome it. Think about it for a minute. Where would my logical mind have gone at the time? I would have probably got, hmm, there's 10 of these people saying that's, that's, we can't do this and only two saying it's okay. And so I would have had this natural mind thing going on of where, what would I have done with that? And I, I think for all of us that's the key, isn't it? It's sometimes stepping back, not looking what everyone else is saying, but listening to God. And it's the greatest challenge in life because sometimes you're going to be the sole voice and a crowd of people that are telling you something different? And will you be able to stand and just and work your way through that? And I've learnt over the years, so many times I've been that sole voice and everyone thinks I'm a little strange and unusual. I'm a little strange and unusual, that's good. Bit quirky, right? We're all gonna be a bit quirky, right? A little bit different. Pastor Brent knows I'm a bit quirky, that's why we get on well, we're just different. But the thing is, if you're gonna be a sole voice, you have gotta be able to stand there and go, I'm okay with that because I really feel the Lord's spoken that. And every now and then I do things that are very different and people look at me and go, that's a little strange because I believe it's the Lord and I've learned over the years, I'm getting it about 90% right, which is pretty good. When I started my journey, it was probably about 60%. So I'm getting better as I'm getting older. That's a good thing, Renee, right? Yeah. Aging gracefully. Thank you. Self, self comment there. All right. So numbers 13, 27, 30. So they reported to him and said, we came to this land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey, and this there is fruit. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified, very large, and they go on talking about the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites. Basically, they're saying, it's, it's, it's terrible, we can't go in here. And Caleb basically quiets them all and says, this is our land. And again, when you're standing there and you're hearing those reports, 
you've got to learn to process and listen to God. And you know what I've respected with uh, our senior leader, Pastor Brent here. I've, I've watched where the church has gone through difficult times financially, and he wanders off as he does and has a bit of time out and waits, waits on the Lord, and then he comes back and says, it's going to be okay, because he's learnt to listen to that voice where all the other voices are saying the opposite. It's important, eh? So when you have that voice and you feel you're isolated and you're alone, share it with people you trust, that people have some, so have been around in the journey, who have got some authority, some wisdom, and you can bounce off them. Now, we're going to get it wrong sometimes, and that's okay, and that's why we have a body. We can bounce off each other. So if our thinking's a little off track, we can balance each other, right? And that's what I love of the body. Every now and then my thinking's a little off centre. Look, years ago, I remember my wife wanted to get into politics. I had a real problem with her getting into politics. You know why? Because all I saw it was taking her away from me and may, she may have to live in Wellington. And so I was quite upset with this whole thing. It was really, I'm thinking, I'm not liking this. Because you see, my natural mind had grabbed it and already put it in its little box. That's what it looks like. So when I had a meeting, Pastor Brent may not even remember this. So Pastor Brent, we're telling him all this. And he looks at me, great wisdom. You ready for this? He says, get over yourself. That's what he said to me. But it was, it, you know what? It's I needed to hear that because what he was saying, he said, look, there's tons of people who do this. Go and phone this person, talk to this person, do that. Because it was wisdom speaking back to me because my fear had gotten the way of what the Lord was doing. How many times have we let fear come around us and it stops us again from taking hold of the promised land? All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron and the whole assembly. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken and plunder. And they go on and on and on about this. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the assembly. They started saying, this land is ours. You've got to understand God's given it. They had absolute faith. But at the end of it all, the whole assembly talked about stoning them. So here is the Lord doing these miracles, for taking them out of Egypt, doing all these miracles along the way, and then the people saying, why have you brought us here to die? This is a terrible situation. How many times do we see people in life when you're talking who are out of Christ and they sound like the people come out of Egypt and they want to go back to Egypt? You hear it, don't you? You hear people have gone through pain and they want to go back into the pain because of situations they've been in or fear is driving them in that. And when you look at this whole thing with Moses... And what was going on, I mean, it's a bit of a crazy thing. Imagine if you've seen the Lord move so powerfully all the way, taking out of Egypt, and then they said, now God's given us this land, and you're standing there and saying, well, no, we can't do that. It's impossible. Let us go back to Egypt. And there's lots of sermons going back to Egypt. My point being this, they end up wandering 40 years because the Lord gave them what they wanted. They stayed in captivity for 40 years until their sons and daughters took over the land. They actually got what they wanted. So I think for us in life, the key thing is when we're aligning our thoughts to the Holy Spirit, it is a faith journey. It is something where we're constantly looking at how the Lord is moving, what he's doing, how he's tweaking. And we don't get it right all the time, and that's okay. Because what I've learned is God's actually really graceful. When I get it wrong, God's going, I'm still here, let's go again. And he's always got his hand out stretched to me. And sometimes I go a little off track, go a little wide, and the Lord's just standing there waiting, and I come back in again. And then people speak into my life, and then I settle down again. And then I get my confidence back and go, actually, God's still with me. It's pretty good, eh? All right. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove the will of God is that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. What does it mean to renew? I, take, I like to take back uh, the Greek. I want to look at the Greek for renew. So think about this, renewing your mind. The Greek means to completing a process, make fresh, new, see properly. And I really like this, renew, to see properly. A new development, a renewal. In the Hebrew, it says a change of heart and life. To renew is a change of heart and life. So when we look at this verse, be transformed by the renewing or making fresh or seeing properly and have a change of heart and life so that you may prove the will of God, which is good. So when you put it into perspective, it's actually a complete change of the way we're thinking and the way we're doing things. I, was, um, I mowed my lawns yesterday. 
Uh, yeah, I know. It's a very exciting moment for you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, you would be uh, excited, though, because my lawn is uh, five and a half acres, so it's, it's rather large. And um, I've got a little ride-on mower, and my little ride-on mower could not do this lawn, let me tell you. I've tried. I've gone down and tried it, and I just, it just it can't do it. But it was so high that the, the grass was up to about here, and the gorse was like this. And I, so I went, and my wife um, organised a tractor for me with this cutting device on the back, a slasher. It was awesome. <laughs> Paul, you would have loved it, mate. It was awesome. So I got on this tractor. I've never driven a tractor before, by the way, but I'm just awesome because God is with me. And, I, and so I got on this tractor and was driving it, and, and I put the slasher on. And, you know, the grass, you couldn't see the lay of the land because the grass was so high. But as, you, as I drove over it, it just flattened everything behind, behind me, and I could see the land again for what it was and the contours. And that's what it's like in God when we've allowed our minds to get full up with the weeds Sometimes you've got to get in some prayer, you've got to get some people to stand with you, you've got to get into the word, you've got to get back and worship, you've got to find your place in God, and you've got to mow that sucker down. And the, and the thing for me, it was, I, I, I have to say this, I thoroughly enjoyed running over the gorse. It was so good, because we've got gorse, and I hate gorse, right? You know, it's prickly gorse, it's horrible. And this thing, I just... I just sort of watched it flatten in front of the tractor, and I kept going, going, it's killing all the weeds as well. All right. In summary, however you're viewing your life, I think you would all agree that as we seek God a little more, maybe we get our scriptures out and our Bibles off again, maybe we pray a little bit more with what's going on, rather than making every instant decision, keep asking the Lord to reveal revelation, to keep speaking with us, speaking regularly with the Holy Spirit, building a relationship so it's not a one-way relationship. Have you ever been in a, um, with people where they're talking and you're having a conversation, but it's, it's a one-way? You got friends like that? I've got some awesome friends, and I've got one friend in particular. I can sit there and let him talk. I, have to, I don't have to say anything. <laughs> have you got friends like that? One way, you just sit there and they go, boop, 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 and you go to say something, and, boop, 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 and then you just say one little word, and then they go off and tell you a whole story about that one little word you've spoken. It's a one-way conversation, and I think what we have to learn with the Lord, don't make it a one-way conversation. Don't make it where you're telling the Lord all the time what he needs to be doing or what all your issues are. Rather than actually, Lord, how about we, you tell me what's going on and how I can help others in this journey? Yeah? Communication, that's the right, Pastor. It's, it's a two-way street, right? My journey this year is to push back negativity, fear, and manipulation because I feel it surrounds the nation. It's very strong. It surrounds work environments. It surrounds people's lives. And I don't like it, so I'm going to make a stand to help everyone that comes into my path to bring the peace of God, the love of God, the hope of Jesus into their life. And I believe that's for all of us. We're all created to do this. So as I look at the year, I've learnt I need to keep trusting on the Lord, keep listening, and to align my thoughts to Jesus, because aligning is really, really important, because the more I align myself to what the Lord's doing, the more effect I have on people's lives. And then it gets excited. Is that good? That's me. Thank you, Pastor Brent. I'll hand it back to you. Wow. What, a, uh, what a brilliant message, eh? And uh, let's just uh, apply it to our lives. Excellent. Thank you so much, Beresford. Um, I would just want to pray for everybody right now. Can we, let's just pray. Father, I just thank you that the revelation of God speaks into every situation in our lives. And even though our natural thinking and our natural man might want to say one thing, we thank you that faith says something completely different so often. Father, we want to be men and women of faith in every aspect of our lives. Use this message this morning to challenge us very, very deeply. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here today. Lord, we look forward to being together tonight to celebrate your goodness and again hear your word coming to us. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go and have a great afternoon. We'll see you here tonight.